Hello everybody, welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. Visit evangelistnickgarrett.com to learn more about narrative apologetics. We deal with what we believe to be the most important subject in human history. Salvation for mankind, humankind. Questions about God and God's design and God's plan for us. Today's message is not coming from one of the ancient history books, but from the Holy Bible itself. The Holy Bible contains truth, and some of the truths are harsh, but you have to dig past the basic nomenclature of religion to develop an understanding. You have to read many of the books and take them together as a whole. The Bible tells one narrative account, not dozens of little stories. There's nothing wrong with the moral structure that can come from treating the Bible as morality stories, but to truly understand the plan of God for mankind, for humankind, the Bible is understood as one complete narrative. In the New Testament, the gospel of God is revealed by his son, Jesus Christ. Today is the parable of the sowing of the seeds. But to get there and fully understand it and benefit from it, we need to start at a few other places first. Paul was one of the most prominent apostles in the early Christian movement. He wrote a large portion of the New Testament. One of his direct students was a young person named Timothy, who himself became what we would call a pastor. Paul writes letters to Timothy. In one letter, Paul's in Macedonia, and he asked Timothy to stay back in Ephesus to ensure that the new Christians there didn't teach any other doctrine. There was great concern that the doctrine of the apostles, which had been with Jesus and understood the gospel of God as a great mystery and not just through the surface parables that we're going to read about in Mark today, that they were the ones who were getting the message across. In this letter to Timothy, we learn first what God wants, what God's purpose for humankind would be. In this letter, he writes to Timothy, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, humankind, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Why? Because God will have all men to be saved. God would like for all people to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So there we go. God would like for everybody to be saved. God would like for everybody to come to a knowledge of truth, a saving knowledge. As we're going to learn today, that doesn't happen. If you flip back to the first letter written to the church at Thessalonica, the Thessalonians, this is when Paul is in Macedonia. And he says something interesting. He's talking about, he says, We give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. That term, your election of God, well, he's talking to the people that had been truly saved by the gospel of God. What's the difference between people who are truly saved by the gospel of God and those that might not be? Now, let's jump to the parable of the sower. This parable comes from chapter 4 of the gospel of Mark. There are four Gospels in the New Testament. Mark is the second one. It's one of what are called the synoptic Gospels. Mark, Matthew, and Luke are largely drawn from each other. John is a very different type of writing, a different style, a different approach, a different take. But chapter 4 of Mark begins this way. We learn that Jesus began to teach in towns by the sea. And many gathered unto him. There was a great multitude. So in this particular case, he went up on a ship and was sitting on the ship in the sea while all the people gathered around the boat and on the shore to hear him teach. 
And here's what he taught. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. To give you a picture, an individual with a bag of seeds that scatters them on the ground to grow things. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured them. They never had a chance. So the seed is the word of God, the gospel of God. The sower is Jesus Christ, the apostles. So they're sowing the seed. And right away, these seeds didn't take. Something came, distracted, took them right away. What could it be? The sins in our life, the lust in our life, the distractions in our life. It could be anything. And some fell on stony ground. As the sower went, the fowl took some. Some fell on stony ground. Well, what happened to them? Let's see. They didn't have much earth. And immediately they sprang up. They sprouted. These seeds in the gospel sprouted? Hmm. They're saved? Ah. But when the sun came up, they had no depth of earth. And it fried them. So there we go. So far, we have two types of receivers of this seed, this gospel. Some were taken right off the chance and never had a chance. Some fell on rocky ground and actually sprouted. They are Christians. The sun came up and cooked them, though. Right? This could be an example of somebody who gets it and gets so excited real quick, but they're not in it for the long haul, right? They wear out after a month or two, or they start going to church, um, and many think they know better than the pastor or know better than the Christians that have walked the walk for a long time, and they're not willing to listen or let their ego go. Um, they're not willing to give control of their life over to the Lord, over to the gospel of salvation, and they wither. They get offended. We get offended so easily, right, in these days. Now the sower goes along and there's more. Some of the seeds that the sower sowed fell among thorns. They grew up with the thorns. They were mixed in. These, these saved, beautiful seeds were mixed in with the thorns. But the thorns grew and choked them out. Some weren't strong enough. Right? The some weren't strong enough. The seeds took root, but they weren't strong enough. And they were choked out by the life around them, the distractions around them. Wow, so far we've had three types of Christians. The sower is sowing the seed. The seed is taking, but something is happening. Paul said to Timothy that God wants everybody to be saved. To the Thessalonians, Paul writes, hey, you guys are the elect. You're the real deal. We're reading about the sower. So far, there's three different kinds, and none of them have taken. Ah, and others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100. And he said unto them, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, here is the truth of this message. We had four different types of Christians born from the truth of the gospel. Only 25% of them, one-fourth, sprouted and bore fruit. That's fascinating. Now, he goes on to say to his apostles, when he was alone, they asked him about the parable and what it meant. And he says, look, I do the parables for kind of like everybody. But you guys, I'm telling the deep mystery to, the reality of this truth. This is hard to hear. 75% of them aren't going to make it. 25% will. Do we find this idea supported anywhere else in scripture? Well, it just so happens we do. The Gospel of Matthew, the first gospel in the New Testament, chapter 24, a very famous chapter talking about the end days. Verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, that same shall be saved. Whew. Hard truth, isn't it? 
Paul writes to his beloved son, Timothy, Hey, I told you to stay in Ephesus while I went to Macedonia so that you could make sure they are teaching no other doctrines. God wants everybody to be saved. It's important. We've got to pray, constant supplication. The message is simple. There is one mediator between God and man, and it is Jesus Christ. To the Thessalonians, he says, Hey, you guys... I pray for constantly. I'm so grateful for what you've done in the faith, the name of our Father, and you were given the Holy Spirit. You are the elect. You are the ones that will survive unto the end according to Matthew. You are the one-fourth from the parable of the sower. Brutal truths, friends. The Bible is a serious book for serious people. Any individuals in your life that might be atheist or agnostic, they shouldn't have any argument or anything to say unless they've actually read the material that they say they don't believe in. That can be a good starting point for a discussion with a family member. How do you know if you've just watched a few videos or adopted the skepticism of a public fool on YouTube? I challenge those who don't believe to simply read some of it. Read some of it and say, God, if you're there, please reveal yourself to me. You won't be disappointed. And that might be a good way to start our own evangelism in our family with an individual we know doesn't believe. Pick up the phone and call him today. I'm talking to you, yes. If you're watching this, I'm talking to you, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. Pick up the phone. See how they're doing. Live by example. Don't preach at them about their sin to begin with. You have to be a living example. Give them a platform to rail on about their atheism or agnosticism and then ask them what they have actually read to come to that conclusion and encourage them to read some of the New Testament. Love you, friends. Thank you. If you can support the channel via PayPal, please do. A uh, few dollars here or there. We also have Cash App, Venmo. You can purchase one of the books I've written at Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett. You can make a merch perch, a shirt, a mask, a pack, whatever. Truth First Christianity gear, cool t-shirts. One of which I took a picture of the catacombs at the Franciscan Monastery and it's on there. Support us by watching these videos, liking, clicking, sharing, subscribing. Uh, you can join the channel. Uh, and visit us on evangelistnickgarrett.com. Thank you, friends. See you next time. God bless you. May your work today bear fruit.